Cool. Welcome everyone to the JSIPFS weekly dev uh, stand-up. Uh, today is March 26, 2018. And as usual, we'll try to make a very short call to share our updates, what we have done last week, what we got blocked, and what we are planning for next week, and also answer any questions that people might have. Um, uh, as usual, I appreciate that like, if you could uh, add your update to the crit path beforehand, it makes it, uh, it is very helpful for others to be able to read as you share your update. And you can do that on the crit path. Um, do we have a note taker for today? Someone that can. All right, Volker, thank you so much. Cool. So, um, how is everyone, by the way? Is everyone doing okay? Can everyone hear me fine? Sweet, awesome. Uh, I'll share my update first, um, as I'm the first on the list. So I have advanced the, um, yeah, Walker. It just be quick, it would be cool if everyone could add his or her name to the attendee list on the trip page. It would be useful. Thank you, yeah. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm David Diaz, uh, and my update is that uh, I've advanced on the lib peer-to-peer -peer config uh, refactor. Uh, there's a lot of work there, and a lot of work that will influence the, the overall refactor. I'm just doing it by parts, so there's an advance there. Uh, as usual, review PRs and merges and releases of things that people ask me. Um, and yeah, like I didn't manage to do everything I had planned last week just because of end of the quarter. Uh, administrative tasks that I have to do as well. My my plan for this week so um, is to continue. Like so, last week I, I said like we need to distribute the module ownership by more people so that more people can have the authority and like the responsibility to review PRs, merge, and do the releases. And, and I want to create that structure this week. Uh, I think it will be very beneficial, especially because some of us already are doing that. Uh, and I want to make it explicit so that the contributors and the maintainers know that like, they always assign to what. Um, I want to finish the lip peer config pull request, and I want to work with all of you uh, on OKRs for quarter two. And my proposal there is to, like, to really uh, like, take inspiration from how the web browser team does it. Like, we start with a pull request on just IPFS, like to a document, and, and we can use that document to like, share feedback with each other. Uh, and then once we feel that document is finished, then I will port it over to the spreadsheet. Google Spreadsheets is not really great for collaborative editing because the comments feature doesn't really work well. Um, so that's my update. Any questions for me on all these things or suggestions? Sweet, sounds good. Let's go next. Uh, Volker? You're muted. All right, yeah, yeah, I just always have trouble to find the unmute button, so all right. Um, so my update is, on uh, my laptop, everything is really slow when Zoom is running, so all right. So my update is I was at a conference last week at the at a German open source geo conference. It was combined with a code sprint. Uh, yeah, I talked a lot of people about uh, IPFS and also noise, the other project I'm doing. And therefore, I'm not blocked on anything because I haven't really done any real work. Um, but next is working on the OKRs, obviously. And I've still changes for the DAG API in the queue for the CLI and the um, um, HTTP API. So I want to finish those. And I've seen that there are quite a few uh, flaky tests on JS IPFS. So I really want to get those green as well, because my goal basically is that we can run the, um, the JS IPFS API and the JS IPFS test on JS IPFS core. <laughs> All right, so this will be my goal, and yeah. But for this, the tests obviously need to work well, else it doesn't make sense. Um, all right, that's all I have. Cool. Uh, we should get um, 
like nicknames for all these projects so that they're easier <laughs> easy to distinguish. Um, my question slash suggestion is given that you are going to tinker with tests, uh, right now there has been a proposal to create a daemon pool or a node pool. Um, one of the things that makes the tests take a lot of time is really spawning the daemons. Um, and so if we create something that wraps IPFS DCTL and just like spawns like 10 daemons or whatever the number of daemons is um, that is required for the tests, then every time that like a spawn is called, then um, then uh, um, like you don't need to wait for the creation of it. Uh, Dimitri? <clears throat> yeah, I, I think we, um, I'm not sure if pulling the daemons is such a good idea, but maybe having pre-created repos that we can just copy real quickly and then spawn the daemon on top of that, that would be uh, probably cleaner. Um, pulling the daemons means that um, you're not going to be running with a clean repo um, sometimes, unless you already mean that having the repo copied over uh, every time. Depends on, how but, yeah. Depends on how you implement it. Like definitely, like there is two things that take a lot of time: creating the RSA keys and like just spawning the process. Uh, creating the RSA keys is definitely probably going to cut off of the time uh, that is already spent. The pulling the demons, uh, I was not proposing to reuse the demons, but just like to create a demon pool that is already available, so that instead of like you waiting ten seconds for the demon to be ready, mm. like. Oh. Uh, okay. But. Um, but this is like a suggestion for you, Volker, given that you are going to think with that, might make your work easier uh, by making this faster. Cool. Oh, let's uh, go to the next update, Diogo. Oh, you have a hand? Sorry, I was looking at the that. Go ahead. Uh, just real quick, I don't really try to improve the test that heavily. Like, I'm more concerned about like getting the current ones somehow green and then hopefully someone else would uh, at one point clean up the head. We'll mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, uh, it was just a suggestion. Uh, cool, yeah, thank you and welcome back. Uh, we want to hear all the updates from FOS, GIS. Uh, you, you need to share an update. <laughs> Not now, like in an issue or something. <laughs> cool, um, Diego? Yeah. All right, I was unmuting. Well, this was my onboarding week, my first week digging in the code. It was a, a nice challenge, I must say. <laughs> so uh, I've done a small PR fixing a linter error that already got merged. Then David mentioned me in an issue, so I started uh, working on that. I published uh, a module, a small module that uh, compares symbols instead of, of comparing uh, places instances. We're using like uh, constructor.name to, to check if an instance is part of a class. Uh, but I, I think it was Pedro Teixeira that suggested that we use symbols. Yeah, so I, uh, there was an echo. So I, I published a module doing that. Uh, I started working on it, applying it to, to some other repos, but uh, Babel, but the transpiler, was having some problems, so I had to rework that, and I'm, I'm doing that at the moment. And yeah, ne next week I plan to, to make some PRs in some modules. I think that's it. Oh, and then I, <clears throat> I sent you an email, David, with some feedback about the onboarding. If you want, I can I can open an issue to make that public. I don't know if it makes uh, sense. Yeah, I, I think creating an issue is a good idea. Uh, I'll try to get to the email today as well. Um, thank you, thank you for like compiling those notes from what was your onboarding experience and like wrapping up on like that project. It's always super useful. What are the main blockers at this point? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like so, um, the. Um, Sounds good. Like always, always. Uh, like given that this work requires touching multiple repos, it is always good as a good practice in, on the issue that like the bug was reported or where the main issue where like we initially thought about the problem to track all the work that needs to happen in all the other repos. Like just just doing a list 
or like, okay, I need to change this repo and this repo and release and et cetera. Like just like all those tasks uh, helps everyone else understand what is the status of that, that task. Um, because, well, there is no way to, to really have a, an issue across multiple repos. You really have to link all the things uh, a little bit manually. Yeah, and in, in the comments, uh, cross-reference yeah. the, the issue, right? I, I don't know how, how to, well, I, I, for example, I have to, to open a PR in the multi-format repo, mm -hmm. but then I'll have to go to IPFS and open a PR to updating the package JSON, right? Yeah. How, how, but how do you guys are going to test that? So the, just the, the, the contract that we have with each other is when you open a PR that requires like other PRs from other modules, you just say, okay, this PR in order for it to work depends on these PRs for all the other modules. And the person that is testing uh, and reviewing uh, does the work of like cloning, uh, npm install, npm link all the way, and testing it. Okay. It's, uh, it's, again, it's kind of like what we live with npm, uh, but like it's the thing that has worked well pretty pretty much uh, for us. Uh, all the other things that we tried in the past kind of like resulted in a lot of confusion. Just just make it explicit. Just like say what it needs <laughs> to, to okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, um, let's uh, catch um, like later or maybe tomorrow, uh, even that now you have spent your first week, so that then we can start like identifying major verticals for you to like start focusing on instead of like just picking random issues from the pool. Sounds good. Uh, I'll send you my link so that you can pick a time. Cool, next up, uh, Ashing Brain, also known as Alex Potsides. Hi, uh, so this week, uh, yeah, I did some onboarding um, and had the uh, initial attempt at uh, taking arbitrary chunks out of file streams merged into the Unix FS engine uh, repo. I started looking at um, uh, kind of experimenting with with changing the max chunk size for files that are stored in IPFS to see if we could get kind of better um, seeking performance by loading smaller chunks of the files in, in one go. Uh, and I discovered that the change that I'd made doesn't work when you have uh, lots and lots of chunks uh, because the tree structure gets deeper and, and the approach was naive and didn't take this into account. So I've been fixing that. Uh, it's almost done. Um, I'm hoping I'll be able to put a PR in for that tomorrow. Uh, and then we can merge the example as well uh, into the repo, the main repo, and that'd be cool. Sounds good, sounds good, that's great. Um, so can you add to my list of things, the PRs that you need me to review and merge so that I make sure I prioritize that? Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll ping you in them already. Sweet. Uh, same thing for you, Alex, like we should catch up tomorrow. Uh, so just like now that you have done the first week, um, so that we can find some verticals for you to like focus, uh, more in, in mid long term, uh, and not just pick random issues from the law forward. Sounds good. Yeah. Great. Uh, Rob, do you have a question? Does, does changing chunking like that have, um, implications for like interoperability with somebody using go IPFS? Cause then it, you add a file through JSIPFS versus adding it through Go IPFS, you'd wind up with a different hash because you'd have a different structure. That's a good question. I haven't tried it with Go IPFS. Uh, it should not require to change the chunking. This is more for um, starting at certain offsets of the file. And so, um, like, you still add the file as you were doing before, but this is like more a read operation change than a write. Actually, it doesn't even change the right operation. Gotcha. Okay, I misunderstood what he was what he what he was talking about doing that. Um, no, I was I was passing different options into the importer, um, the JavaScript importer, which then does change the file chunks that are stored in the leaf nodes of the of the DAO. You are passing, um, and what were those options exactly? Uh, there's, uh, it's just called max chunk size, like. But like, in order for seek to happen, you don't need to change that. I'm, I'm no, no. You don't need to, but it is an option that you can pass in. So I was trying to 
was trying to see if I could make seek be quicker by having smaller file chunks. So you need to load less of like, you know, there's less data going over the wire before you get to the bytes that you're interested in. Got it. Got it. Okay. So now I understand. Um, to clarify, uh, I, I guess, um, essentially like, even go lets you support different chunk sizes. Like we just like default to 256K, but like we have been doing that forever. Um, and what Alex was experimenting with is that like when you have this graph and you want to do a seek, like the, the links on the graph will tell you certain sizes of like what is below that branch. And, and so with smaller chunks, you can quickly, quickly go to the to the branch that has the 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 offset that you're looking for but it, it is i guess like an experiment it's not like changing the default value the default will still be 256k uh, yeah, that's right. or just like maybe like in the tutorial I'll explain if you really want to do six maybe you want to import the files in a different way exactly all right thank you any other questions was, was this helpful rob like did he clarify your question um, I mean, sort of. So, so it reframes this as like an experiment in what ways of using IPFS works well or not, not really a change to JS IPFS per se. So any advice that comes out of this should be exactly the same for somebody who's Go IPFS. Um, so that's, I guess, somewhat important to understand. That is true. Perhaps we can have some tests written for the interop repo as well, Alex, as part of this work, so that we, we see and we make sure that both options are respected. Yep. Yeah, of course. Sweet. Sounds good. Thank you. We have nine minutes left, so let's like try to move fast. Uh, Dimitri? Hey. So um, <clears throat> last week I worked on uh, IPFS DCTL improvements mostly, uh, detecting running nodes, which I think HackDS uh, required for IPFS desktop. Um, the ability to use Go and JS environment uh, variables to set the, the daemon and default into a flag to default to the um, daemon addresses. Um, I also worked on, I also started looking into the, I've been making some changes to uh, LPTP multiplex um, related to an issue that was discovered and then I uh, realized that uh, there's an issue to rework it with pull streams. So I've been looking into that as well. Sounds good. Yeah, like that issue will be super important. It will make just a PFS way faster because that we have a conversion between Node.js streams and pull streams there. And also would reduce the bundle size of the peer to peer because then we don't need to import this, this shim. So that's yep. like a super awesome issue to work on. Thank you for picking it awesome. up. Uh, Rob. Uh, nothing too special to say other than uh, I did not actually get to doing the thing that we talked about. I should go back and do on the call last week. Um, so uh, it's my job to get that done this week. Um, and you, W merged in a sort of interim little bit of brief documentation for now. Yeah, exactly. It, uh, I, like I, as I reported on the PR, I was like, felt that like we had made some progress and to not leave it hanging. Like we can still upgrade more about. So thank you so much for opening that. Cool, Zane. Cool. So uh, sort of last week, um, took a look at the IP6, IPv4 like validations in multi-adder um, and just try to make sense of what was going on uh, and compared that to the Go library. Um, so um, given that doing the IPv6 validations is actually just a lot of code to write and like verify is correct, um, it seemed like using the IP address uh, library would be a good option. I think it's maybe used already within libp2p switch. Um, so I just wrapped that with the buffer and submitted a PR, if that makes sense. Alternatively, there's a long regex that we could use to apply against the IPv6. Uh, and then the other thing was I started working on the JS IPLD like um, put uh, to support like um, a custom hash algo on the um, CID um, and so I just 
filed a PR for um, that as well, or the start of that. So it involves going through all of the utilities and changing the like um, shape of the request. Um, so uh, I mentioned that in the issue. And next week, uh, looking at tackling a new JS IPLD issue, um, probably we'll pick up the serializes too many times. Yeah. That's, it. That's excellent. Thank you. Um, okay, I will review these pull requests. Uh, like the strategy of using IP address sounds uh, good to me. And as you said, like we already use that module, so that it's not like adding uh, Volker, you have something urgent? Or should I finish my thought? Yes, yeah. So just uh, for uh, saying, um, the there isn't PR changing the IPLD spec a bit. I will put it to your issue as well, but the API for the serializing the CID will change. So perhaps it automatically will solve the double encoding problem. So basically, so probably you pick, so I guess the, the takeaway is probably better taking out other issues. <laughs> okay, awesome. I'll do that then. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. do check in with Zane after it and like maybe give some suggestions on like what would be best issues to tackle on IPLD land. Does that sound good, Zane? That sounds good to me. Yeah, I would love to know what you need. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, when, when we know these things, it's always good to have live on the issue. Okay, like this issue is going to get solved by this other endeavor or it's blocked by this other endeavor. So that people that don't have access to these calls or don't participate in these calls also have that information. Cool, all right. So we are done from updates that are on the crit pub, but I feel that there is at least one more update. Jacob, like do you want to share, like uh, I, I know like, you have been doing stuff for last week, so would you like to share an update with us? Yeah, sure. Um, so I added a um, spec to the interface repo for um, adding CID instances to the files cat API. Um, that's been merged into, <coughs> excuse me, uh, into JSIPFS. Uh, also did an update, some small updates for the multiplex dependency. So that's now using um, mplex instead of the deprecated multiplex and then one of the globs in the um, testing suite was incorrect, so that's been corrected. Um, this week, I'll probably meet with David to, again, look at vertical slice um, for the application. Um, and right now, I'm just continuing to deep dive into the, uh, the ecosystem to get up to speed. Sweet, sounds good. Okay, I'll share my Calendly with everyone. Um, Let's, yeah, let's like have the chat as soon as possible so that everyone can like be productive for the rest of the week. Um, yeah, Kyle and Hugo, do you have anything to share? Ask, update us? By the way, Hugo, I think it's the first time you're a call. Do you want to say hi and like just introduce hi guys? <laughs> yeah, right now I don't really have nothing to update. I'm just reading documentation and talking with the uh, to get up to speed, so that's basically it. Okay. Uh, okay. Kyle? Uh, I, uh, let's see, I, I'm just sort of listening in, uh, but uh, I'm still, um, I just want to mention quickly that uh, this week I'm sort of finalizing all of the stuff for uh, how we're going to communicate with web browsers uh, on getting interfaces that we can use to improve JS IPFS in the future. Uh, things like you know being able to uh, get access to like UDP sockets and stuff like that, like pretty pretty long term like ambitious stuff that'll make it so that you know WebRTC isn't the six hundred connection thing you know and, and everything right. So uh, so you'll probably see some invites coming from me for like a mailing list and stuff. So um, just be on the lookout for that. All right, thank you, Val. Sounds exciting. Um, Cool, okay, so we have like one minute left and I guess there is um, like one thing uh, that I want to cover, which is the Waffle Works. So we have like three Waffle Works. Um, 
it is like a Kanban style of a warn. It has like backlog, ready, in progress, and done. Uh, there is a video on the first issue or the first comment of the, the thread for the weeklies that explains how we use it. There is also a document, MGMT, on GSIPFS that explains how to use it. And what the thing that I'm, like essentially the thing that I want to get to by explaining this is that I feel that we are not using the waffle boards as they were designed to be used, as in like it is really hard to look at the waffle board and understand like what people are working on. Uh, because like when you touch a pull request, like it tells you that it, it becomes in progress and that's great because it's automatic. Uh, but if you know it's like you are now blocked by this pull, in this pull request and it cannot work, it is um, useful for you to do the, the work of like changing from in progress to ready because like if it's not being worked on, then it should be on the ready column. Um, why do we want this? Like we want this to understand if we are actually tackling the top priority issues. Like right now, when I do the filter by P0 and P1 and so on, it is clear that not everyone is tackling the most important issues, at least from the, the heuristic that we use to declare what is an important issue or not. Um, but there might be reasons for that. Like there might be other issues that are actually more important because there might be other bugs that appear. And so it is good for us as a team, as a, and you can see like this team is growing, like more and more people are joining, to be very diligent on updating like the priority of the issue, um, like saying if it's in progress already, uh, and, and making sure that those issues keep going through the pipeline. So that, that like it's very easy to track progress or, or to understand where everyone is headed. Um, I like I wonder like does anyone ask questions about this? Like do they like the idea? So like I see Ugo and Rob. Ugo first. Yeah. This is, so you you are saying to if we get blocked in the middle of finishing a task. Uh, yeah. You suggest that we just move the text to the ready column? Yeah. Was well, that it? Uh, let me rephrase that. It's a good question. So, what I mean is if you get blocked and if you know, oh, this thing is now blocked by something that is going to like take a while, like, uh, or that it is blocked by something that I don't control, uh, then it should move to, uh, to the ready column. Like, it should not be on the in progress. Otherwise, what happens is like you then have 20 issues on the in progress and no one knows anymore exactly like which one you are tackling. Um, yeah, but uh, it, uh, that re will create another problem. Like you, in the ready column, you will have uh, 100 issues and you will not know which of those are really ready or just blocked. So we can have a separate level. Right now, how we have been making a distinction is that like when someone is assigned to an issue, it means like that person is owning the issue. Uh, and so if something on sound ready that like is assigned to me, you you should not try to pick it up. Like it's on my plate. Uh, and so there is a way to filter that like by empty issues so that you can find something new to work on. Um, but if it's helpful, we can definitely add another label that just says blocked so that people know that like something is blocked as well. Maybe I feel like that's a good, good idea to, to do. Um, and we do have a tool to like add labels to all the repos, right, Victor? <laughs> we can add another one. Cool. Uh, Rob? Uh, that's mainly what I was going to ask, which is, does it make sense to add a label or even a special column? Because it's kind of important to understand that something is blocked, not just like haven't had a chance to work on it yet or whatever. Uh, but we pretty much just said yes, or at least it's worth a label. So. Yeah, sounds good. Like, you, you are right. Uh, I think a label will be useful. Uh, but, but that's pretty much it. That's it. Uh, Essentially what it means like when someone opens the waffle board and sees the in progress, like they should have a clear picture of like what each person is working on. Um, and they should see the movement of the issues going to the done column. Um, and typically people should like always pick the most urgent first. Of course, there's like some that are like, there is some questions here because like there might be some urgent issue and then because of that you might solve another not as urgent and like you just pile all them up and actually put them as one package and so you end up doing less urgent things. Um, 
and then depending on like the time pressure uh, or like if we are preparing ourselves for a demo or, or if we have a feature that we really need to release to support some use case, like the, the way that we perceive that extra added work uh, might change. And so sometimes like it's really important to just like focus on the critical ones that like uh, need to be shipped as soon as possible. Other times it's okay to just level up the entire project as we go. Um, but then again, uh, always like as a, a golden rule, just like try to take, tackle the P1s and P0s first and, and get that waffle board updated. Sounds good? All right, so I know I have to have some talks with some folks here so that we find those verticals so that people can focus more. Um, for everyone else that has been here for a while, uh, do you feel confident about what the things that you need to work on this week? Okay, I see some thumbs up. Yeah, all right. <laughs> cool, uh, question from Volker and Dimitri, I guess. Uh, what, what's the plan with the OKRs? Because it might have been discussed previously, but yeah, I'm not in the loop. Got, got it. So the OKRs for GSIPFS um, specifically, I will open a PR to the GSIPFS repo with the markdown file OKR.md. And I will also link to the IPFS in web browsers working group markdown file because what they did was just create a like, markdown file with objectives, key results, priorities. And like they had a discussion on a PR, which makes it really nice to have that discussion. Um, and then once they were confident that the list was right, then they added it to the spreadsheet. Uh, and so, yeah, I'll open a PR and then I'll tag everyone and, and we'll just take it from there. Sweet. Uh, Dimitri, you got your hand? I know you're just waiting. <laughs> cool. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time and have a great week. See you on the interwebs. Bye. Bye. See you on. Bye. 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 Have a great week. Bye. Bye.